Hello my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. So guys, we're checking out the Schumann Resonance today. And uh, this right here is uh, Disclosure News. And so what we're seeing right now is basically it's starting to peak again and giving us a background on what we've been looking at. So today is the 12th. Seems that once again we're going towards a gradual increase in activity. Yesterday we had two peaks, today two peaks but more powerful. First one was at 6 UTC and reached 43 hertz. The second at 8 UTC and it reached 40 hertz. Uh, yesterday, after almost three days of calm, there was a new series of peaks, but not very powerful, but significant. Two major peaks have reached around 37 hertz and occurred in succession, the first at 9 UTC and the second at 1030 UTC. These two peaks were anticipated by a gradual increase in activity a few hours earlier from 00 UTC where peaks were recorded around 15 Hertz. So when we look over over here at the spectrogram calendar and this this gives us an idea of different locations because it's not always even. Uh, we look at the first location and this is in California and we see that's not really doing much. And if we look at Saudi Arabia we see that uh, on the 6th and the 7th and the 8th it was very active and it has since then calmed down a little bit but you see some activity going on. And the third location is in Lithuania and here we see a more steady even energy. And the fourth location is in Alberta, Canada and the fifth is in New Zealand. Both of those are relatively, relatively calm. And then down in South Africa, it always seems to be the most active location. And again, the, the bright yellow is more activity. And so this is about understanding this human resonance and its effects on us. And this is out of lifeshaping.me. And it goes on to say, I look at the human resonance as Earth's heartbeat. We are used to viewing our planet as a scrumptious gem of molten and watery for humanity to devour at the expense of our Earth's health and well-being. We would go about things differently if we knew that Earth is a conscious, intelligent life form. And that is what science is discovering. And insiders have come forward to say that we have worked with the most advanced forms of technology that is still hidden from public knowledge. And they don't want you to know this, but yes, the ancients really understood more than we think. I mean, we look at the ancients and many of us would laugh. I remember, you know, growing up and listening to the Greek mythologies and thinking, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You know, they're just crazy old stories, you know, and, and the whole things about the gods and the planets and, you know, Jupiter being the king of the gods and it's also, you know, the planet and you know thinking it's all cute you know we're brought up thinking that you know the sun is just um, a ball of energy that you know it's just full of hydrogen and helium and it's just you know basically n nuclear um, energy that is powering that and is just simply heating up everything you know we we were brought up thinking of everything in a very mechanical sense and that is in my opinion, totally done on purpose. And it's been kept that way because I don't think they want us knowing the truth. And when I say the, they, it's it's obviously the powers that be, uh, the hidden forces that have been in control of the planet for a long time. Knowledge is power. Lack of knowledge, ignorance, equals basically slavery, servitude, and being able to control people. And so that is why we've been kept in the dark. And that is why we've been given a fear-based reality. And a fear-based reality and also a reality which is based on, well, consumerism and capitalism for one, but also this fear of lack, of not having enough, of not being taken care of, or, or not being able to uh, basically sustain ourselves or fear of, you know, the what-ifs and we've lost our contact with the higher realms and the higher frequencies so we've learned a lot through some of the brilliant minds that have come along you know in the last 150 years people such as tesla and max planck among many others as well and what they've uncovered 
is really none other than what has been out there in many traditions, including Vedanta, for thousands of years, and perhaps is leftover knowledge from ancient civilizations. And we've even talked about that perhaps those that are in charge are simply people that did not lose their memory of the ancient civilizations or lose the technology that the ancient civilizations possessed, which seems to have happened to so many of us. The thought is that we are going through a pole shift. And this pole shift is coming about because the magnetosphere is declining and that is coming about primarily because of what's happening in the sun and the reaction of the earth to the sun because everything is about relationships everything is interconnected there is a web of life that goes throughout the universe connecting everything one thing to the other and this interconnectivity ensures and guarantees that what affects one thing will affect the other and so we're learning about this and so going on back to this article, everything in our multiverse, and we've talked about that, the fact that the entire universe that we think we know of is perhaps just one cell in something bigger. The entire universe is perhaps just one little cell in a bigger entity that we could call the multiverse, which expands different levels of frequency and vibration and so our entire multiverse is made of a common element of energy. At its core, energy is information in movement. In other words, energy comprised of codes slash frequencies, information, oscillates creating vibration. These vibrations create patterns. As quantum science world digs deeper, it discovers that these vibrational patterns mimic the same geometrical patterns as the platonic solids torsion fields and spirals. We're talking sacred geometry, which is the building blocks of the universe itself, the tree of life, the flower of life. You know, it's just so beautiful and interconnected. These vibrational patterns are fundamentally replicated and illustrated throughout our nature. It's very easy to see. And pine cones, sunflowers, snail shells, the formation of galaxies, and the list goes on and on and on. We are seeing the organizational nature of energy played out in vibrational expression. We experience it as form, matter, and life. The earth is made of the same stuff everything else is. It's simply energy. It's a complex collection of vibration, vibratory patterns that organizes energy into the form we call earth. It is an alive organism that breathes, evolves, and reacts. You could call it Gaia, we could call it whatever we want. Many scientists are beginning to come to the conclusion that planets and stars are just as alive as you and I. It's, again, it's, it's all consciousness, it's all frequency, it's all vibration. And as Max Planck said, the fundamental nature of everything is consciousness. You cannot get behind consciousness, meaning Consciousness is the prime creator itself. Consciousness is what puts everything else into motion. And so, you know, intelligence, as we have discovered, is not confined to a brain. Instead of looking at a planet as a big rock in orbit, it's an organism of intelligent consciousness. And the Earth is alive and it has its own heartbeat expansion and contraction and its own energetic, energetic fields that create atmosphere and a sophisticated ecosystem. The earth vibrates and emits its own vibrational patterns, its own collective frequency. We can measure that frequency scientifically and it's called the Schumann resonance, the earth's heartbeat. Schumann resonances are a set of spectrum peaks in the extremely low frequency portion of the earth's electromagnetic field spectrum. Schumann resonances are global electromagnetic resonances excited by lightning discharges in the cavity formed by the Earth's surface in the ionosphere. In the normal Schumann resonances, the fundamental mode is a standing wave in the Earth ionosphere cavity with a wavelength equal to the circumference of the Earth. This lowest frequency and highest intensity mode of the Schumann resonance occurs at a frequency of approximately 7.83 Hz. But this frequency can vary from a variety of factors such as solar induced perturbations to the ionosphere which comprises the upper wall of the closed cavity. 
And so it's fascinating you know, how this goes. And we have known all this before. We are rediscovering what we lost. And the traditions that held on to the truth and to these beautiful gems of knowledge were demonized because the powers that be don't want you knowing the truth. And they don't want you understanding and learning these things because then basically it gives you power. It gives you power over your own creation, gives you power over your world. In reality, the Schumann Resonance was discovered far before scientists theorized it. In ancient mystery schools, they understood the connection between the Earth's vibration and pursuing enlightenment. Long ago, they, they understood the connection to being in harmony with the Earth's natural frequency and its life-enhancing benefits. The ancient Indian rishis called 7.83 hertz the frequency of Om. And many of you guys have heard of Om. It's, it's what is done often in meditation. It's a mantra. And it's the, it's the actual sound of the uh, universe when you get down to it. And so here is a good synopsis of the world, the science world, discovering what the yogis already knew. In 1953, Professor W. O. Schumann of the University of Munich was teaching his students about the physics of electricity when they discovered that the Earth's cavity produces very sp specific pulsations, the vibrational pulse of planet Earth. In 1954, measurements taken by Schumann and Dr. Herbert, Herbert Koenig who later became Schumann's successor, confirmed an Earth frequency of 7.83 hertz. In the years to follow, investigators worldwide began to research what had been dumb, dubbed the Schumann resonances. And Koenig compared human EEG recordings with natural electromagnetic fields of the environment, Eureka. They discovered that indeed there was a correlation between the Schumann resonance and brain rhythms. This relationship between the Earth's frequency and brain waves was then studied by researchers around the world. And Koenig carried out further measurements of the Schumann resonance and eventually arrived at a frequency of exactly 7.83 hertz, which is even more interesting, as this frequency is the one in which it applies to mammals. For instance, septal driving of the hippocampal rhythm in rats has been found to have a minimum threshold of 7.7 hertz. And so there's some videos for you to take a look at on that as well. And this is going over to the Global Coherence Initiative at heartmath.org. And the Global Coherence Initiative is an international effort that seeks to help activate the heart of humanity and promote peace, harmony, and a shift in global consciousness. GCI conducts groundbreaking research on the interconnection between humanity and Earth's magnetic fields and energetic systems. And this is out of Dr. Joe Dispenza's blog. So what does a spike in the Schumann resonance mean? And then it goes back into uh, talking about Dr. Schumann and Dr. Koenig and finding that baseline at 7.83. As far back as we know, the Earth's elect electromagnetic field has been protecting all living things with this natural frequency pulsation of 7.83 hertz. And again, we could think of this as the Earth's heartbeat. The ancient Indian rishis referred to this as Om, or the incarnation of pure sound. Whether by coincidence or not, the frequency of 7.83 hertz also happens to be a very powerful frequency when used with brain wave entrainment, as it's associated with low levels of alpha and upper range of theta brainwave states. This frequency has also been associated with high levels of hypnotizability, suggestibility, meditation, and increased, increased HDGH, which is human growth hormone levels, in addition to increased cerebral blood flow levels while this frequency is being stimulated. And so this is a key because HGH is a key to uh, youth and vitality. And so when we go into meditative states and we create this frequency in our, our brain and in through the body, the vibratory rate resonates in the body, brings it into a state of being able to heal itself, regenerate itself, but also harmonize itself with higher intelligences, higher frequencies, the earth itself. And it's so powerful. And that is why in many traditions, they are so fearful of you going within and learning and connecting. 
and we have been manipulated with vibrations we're being manipulated with vibrations right now there are so many things that we could bring up and talk about all the emfs that are around us the lower vibrational foods you name it the water loaded with fluoride and all different sorts of chemicals everything is bombarding us every day to disrupt our frequencies so the key is for us to reclaim and own our own frequencies and it is definitely one of the big challenges that we have right here and uh, this over here is also talking about the Schumann resonance does affect our health the pulse of mother earth is powerful and you know earth is conscious and so there's many people that are so fearful of this thought and just can't uh, can't handle it and it's just because of conditioning and it's part of the conditioning of the you know the powers that be let's just leave it at that we could call them by so many names the DS uh, among you know others as well and so we can see how they've controlled our our you know our philosophies our religions our politics all done to keep us in a lower vibrational state to bombard us with things that are going to keep us in that lower state again I mean we saw it in commercials and you know just look at how they're always trying to bring us down into more baser levels of frequency and so you know this gets into talking about Tesla as well because Tesla said you know if you want to know the secrets of the universe think in terms of energy frequency vibration that's what it's all about and so many ancient civilizations again were also familiar with the earth's re uh, resonance the ancient Indian rishis called the pulse ohm so we keep hearing about these Indian rishis and these are people that went deep into meditation that's all they did that's all they did in many cases these people barely ate they spent their entire days deep in meditation and they were able to discover powerful truths and go way beyond the apparent physical world that we see into what is basically manifesting that physical world and it's it's um, amazing and, and I'm glad that finally you know all this stuff is coming out and more and more people are waking up and shedding their fear-based conditioning so in the 1960s professor Rucker Weaver from the Max Planck Institute for Behavioral Physiology in Erling Andex studied the resonances impact on health in his studies he let participants who didn't fear being in a cell live in underground bunkers for up to four weeks when the Schumann waves were filtered away from the surroundings the subjects did not feel well Weaver noted that when the Schumann resonances were filtered out of the bunker the students suffered physical and mental health and they experienced stress emotional distress migraine headaches after brief exposure to the 7.83 Hertz frequency that had been screened their health stabilized quickly so it's all, long been suspected that human consciousness can impact the magnetic field of the earth itself and actually create disturbances in it and vice versa particularly moments during moments of high anxiety tension and passion so it's it's very very key for us to be in control of our emotions and to be aware that everything we say has power every word has power you know so as as Christ had said it's not even about doing he said if you even think it you've already basically sinned quote unquote so it's so important to control our minds to control our mouths control the frequencies that we're putting out there and uh, this is known and there are ways to to enable our physical bodies to totally recoup so much of what is lost and regain health and vitality through meditation through qigong through mantras through prayer through positive visualizations and through uh, basically creating your own positive affirmations everything is electrical in nature and uh, this gets into more of it as well this is at earthbreathing.co and it talks all about Schumann it talks about Tesla who was you know obviously such an amazing amazing mind 
And so we, we recognize that our world is being manipulated with frequencies all the time. And if we get into the bigger thing of what is going on here, what is really going down here, going down is basically that. There is an attempt to bring down human frequencies as the entire planet is rising in frequency. And as we are naturally rising in frequency, as I've quoted before, the CIA studies that show as cosmic radiation increases, you know, the magnetosphere is in decline, pole shift underway. These things all go together. Magnetosphere decline equals more cosmic rays, equals changes to our DNA, which show basically a greater coherence and an increased an increase in our abilities, our psychic abilities. How many of you are finding that you could read people's minds easier? That you're thinking about a person and they just call you right away. That if somebody feels stress or pain that you love, boom, all of a sudden you just got to go call them and something really is happening. It's happening more and more all the time. These things are increasing in frequency. They might have happened once in a blue moon. Now they're happening on a regular basis and it's only going to increase. And so, you know, this is a beautiful thing, really. And this is the bigger story. And so this gets into ways we could rewrite ourselves. And there's so many things that are healing. Our whole music system is tuned to the wrong frequency. And so by tuning to 432 hertz, it's, it's much healthier and more uplifting. And so I'll leave all these links for you guys as always. And our, bo our bodies and mind are being bombarded with energy that the intent really is to make us out of sync. We can bring ourselves into sync. There are so many different things that can help. Binaural beats are great. Solfeggio frequencies are great. Right frequencies are great. Tuning forks work. They do. I mean, people think, oh, that was... We were talking about, last night with friends, we were talking about woo-woo and things that were thought to be woo-woo. And things that were thought to be woo-woo in the 80s have now been proven, so many of them have been proven scientifically. And the reason why people want to throw these labels on things that have been around from time immemorial and that indigenous people know work uh, is because they don't want us waking up. Chanting, singing is wonderful. Doing it together in a group is even more powerful. Biofeedback, that's another, another thing we can do. There's visual aids. This video got removed, unfortunately, but there are a lot of visual aids as well. And it gets into more as well. And so this is interesting. This is out of harvard.edu. And it's talking about how human bodies are often exposed to vertical vibrations when they're in the workplace or in vehicles. Prolonged exposure may cause undue stress and discomfort in the human body, especially at its resonant frequency. By testing the response to the human body on a vibrating platform, many researchers found that human whole body fundamental resonance frequency to be around 5 hertz. However, in recent years, they, uh, there's been an indirect method that has been prose, which appears to increase the resonant frequency to about 10 hertz. So to experiment, uh, to explain this discrepancy, experimental work was carried out in NTU. The study shows that the discrepancy lies in the vibrational magnitude used in the tests. And so a definition of human natural frequency in terms of vibration magnitude is proposed. So, you know, is, is it changing? Is it changing? Is our vibrational frequency changing? How many of you are experiencing buzzing and vibrating in your ears? How many of you are seeing rivers of light or are seeing what looks to be sparkly things? Like if you look up at the sky, do you see sparkly things that seem to be swimming in all different directions and you didn't experience that before? There are so many things. Do you feel buzzing and tingling in the palms of your feet or on the, on the palms of your hands or in the soles of your feet? You're feeling the energy because we're changing. Everything is changing. Everything is changing, guys. It's all changing. And this is part of a natural cycle. We have talked about how the universe is consciousness itself and as this is saying right here the universe may be conscious say prominent scientists so a proto consciousness field theory could replace the theory of dark matter one physicist states 
So what consciousness is and what, where it emanates from has stymied great minds and societies across the globe since the dawn of speculation. In today's world, it's a realm tackled more and more by physicists, cognitive scientists, and neuroscientists. Basically, in the past, it was just basically a philosophical and quote-unquote the scary word that everybody fears, occult, means it, it's hidden. Things that were hidden. Why were they quote-unquote occult? Well, they were hidden because they don't want you realizing the truth of how the universe works. And so it had to be hidden because those that knew the truth were persecuted. Look at it on throughout history. Persecution after persecution. So take the brain out of the equation and consciousness doesn't exist at all. Is that the case? Is that really the case? Or does it? There are so many after afterlife cases. We call them near-death experiences, but I know and I've talked to several people that have actually been clinically dead for vast periods of time, anywhere from you know eight minutes on up to a half hour or even more. And they all come back with the same stories, the same experiences. For one, they're out of their body and they're still fully conscious. They could see their body. And see, when we get into deep meditation, we can achieve the same thing. We could actually remove ourselves from the body and start to experience an expanded realm of consciousness. And um, this article gets into that some. And I'll leave it for you guys to go deeper. And so if everything is consciousness, is everything conscious at the same time? And uh, if you guys ever get a chance to check out, go on YouTube, Buddha at the Gas Pump. There are some great discussions, great deep discussions on consciousness and on um, quantum physics as well and different philosophical traditions. And it's, it's fascinating to get into. Advaita means not to. Advaita Vedanta is not just saying that at some deep fundamental level everything is unified while the surface level is diverse. It's saying that there is one unified reality and that all apparent diversity is nothing other than the one appearing as the many while actually remaining the one. For example, right now we may feel that we're looking at our computer monitors, but if there's only oneness in the observer the process of observation and the observed must all be the same thing, assuming that those different functions while remaining oneness. For the purpose of this essay, we'll use the term consciousness to refer to this oneness. Although terms such as pure existence, God, Brahman, unified field, vacuum state, all those might suffice. So if there is nothing but consciousness, there can't be anything other than consciousness, which would cause consciousness to appear as limited forms. Somehow consciousness must do this to itself. Bernardo uses the analogy of a whirlpool, which seems to have a form, but is nothing but water interacting with itself. Physics speaks of the unified field as having a self-interacting nature, similarly explaining that at that level there is nothing other than itself with which it could interact. If consciousness creates the material universe through self-interaction, how is it that the various forms which consciousness appears to assume seem to lose sight of their essential nature? Is there, if there is nothing but consciousness, is consciousness somehow hiding its true nature from itself? In Vedic terminology, this hiding quality emerges as a natural consequence of the self-interacting dynamics of consciousness. Being conscious, and having nothing other to do with itself of which to be conscious, consciousness becomes aware of itself and in doing so seemingly diversifies into the observer, Rishi, process of observation, Devata, and observed, Chandas. And I say seemingly because as Rahamana Maharishi and others have pointed out, diversification only appears to take place. It doesn't actually do so. The rope never really becomes the snake. And so, you know, this gets into like when they asked Christ, and Christ said, I and my Father are one. And they picked up stones to stone him because it was blasphemy. They simply don't understand consciousness at all. They don't understand the basic nature of the universe at all. And so, this gets more into that, and it's just amazing. As it says, it seems to me that hiding. The hiding quality of consciousness is essential 
to there being a manifest universe, or appearing to be one. If every bit of creation was fully aware of its true nature as consciousness from the outset, there would be no possibility or need for manifestation, no evolution or change in increasingly complex forms, no fun game of hide-and-seek which God is playing with himself. Once the illusion is seen, though, the game is over. More than one sage has uttered this statement, such as, the universe never manifested or nothing ever happened. All this talk of consciousness as the sole reality and forms as mere appearance is not meant to imply that we should dismiss our activities and relationships as illusory. Contemporary spirituality is now recovering from a tendency to do just that. Many of those who took refuge in the intellectual notion that they were not a person, and that there is nothing to do, lost interest in life, and in some cases suffered disassociative breakdowns. The current emphasis on embodiment is an attempt to counteract this. With that caveat, they will return to their theme. So if everything is consciousness, does it follow that everything is conscious? If so, to what degree have material forms entirely lost sight of their essential nature, or do they all retain at least a glimmer of it? There's a Sufi saying, God sleeps in the rock, dreams in the plant, stirs in the animal, and awakens in man. A rock, a rock is as much in consciousness and consciousness in it as in a human being, but rocks don't appear to be conscious in any meaningful sense. Yet at the atomic and subatomic levels, looking at carbon atoms, for instance, a rock is indistinguishable from a human being. Some would argue that even at this level, nature is conscious. Physicist and cosmologist Freeman Dyson writes that matter in quantum mechanics is not an inert substance, but an active agent, constantly making choices between alternative possibilities. It appears that mind, as manifested by the capacity to make choices, is to some extent inherent in every electron. And in 1973, The Secret Life of Plants by Peter Tompkins and Christopher Bird presented research suggesting that plants are sentient beings that feel emotions, prefer classical music to rock music, and can respond to unspoken thoughts of humans hundreds of miles away. It is also obvious that animals are highly conscious and emotionally sensitive. These examples suggest that everything is conscious to some degree, but that degree spans a vast range. The more complex and sophisticated the physical structure, the more fully conscious consciousness can be reflected. We see much more sophisticated complex structures in living beings than in rocks. Structures capable of reflecting consciousness enough to be conscious, conscious that they are conscious, and in the enlightened, conscious that they are consciousness itself. God sleeps, dreams, and stirs in the rock, the plant, and the animal, because they don't have brains and nervous systems capable of enabling consciousness to be fully awakened to itself, but human beings do. And some will disagree with that statement to a degree as well. And so the body is a vehicle. It's just a vehicle. And that is also a perennial truth that we uncover. And if you go deep enough inside and allow yourself to go deep enough inside with enough patience, you will discover this as well. And so talking to a friend the other day, I told her, just matter-of-factly, that you know, I do have a lot of concerns about everything we're seeing. And they said, but you don't seem to have any fear. And I said, no, not really. Uh, not really fear. Concerns. You know, obviously, if a truck's coming straight at us, no matter what, it's best to move out of the way. Yet, at the same time, you know, there's no reason to be terrified of the truck. And if you know deep down that we are way more than the body and have experienced that. And in the Vedic tradition, that's called self-realization, realizing what the true self is. Then there is no more fear. I mean, are you going to gasp if somebody's shooting a bullet at you and, and experience uh, a moment of fear? Of course. Of course. Um, or, you know, you're <laughs> in a natural disaster, there's an earthquake. Of course, the adrenaline's going to run through. And you're going to get that rise in the endocrine system and, you know, all the natural responses will occur. 
perhaps less though in somebody that's trained uh, in going within than in other situations as we've seen with so much of the training of um, martial artists for instance and the ability to stay calm and cool even in the most adverse circumstances so ultimately this is all a reflection of the fact that this material universe is not material at all I mean in the sense that ultimately it, it's all energy it's all information and it's all consciousness and it's just going through growth and that is what we are going through we're growing we're learning we're changing and we're also being asked to relieve and release ourselves from any lower energies and these energies coming in if we are hanging on to anything that is lower vibrational it's going to be very very uncomfortable and many people are experiencing that now do you notice that if you get into an argument with a loved one now it just feels more intense it feels more painful than it did that's basically because of all the energetic changes that we see around us and so I will leave with that my friends and I look forward to your comments I know it's going to stir a lot of positive and negative on both sides because we all have a lot of conditioning to release we all have a lot of toxins to release we all have a lot of trapped energies to release and this is what these times are about it's about letting go so that we could go from what's been the Kali Yuga the dark age into you know that new heaven and new earth that are so spoken of in all these traditions as always my friends looking forward to your comments thumbs up support the channel please do subscribe click the bell get all notifications share with as many as possible let's wake up as many as possible god bless my friends namaste